in this video let us see the working of a sliding mesh gearbox sliding mesh gearbox is gearbox is actually one of the type of gearboxes used in manual transmission system sliding mesh gearbox was used in used very much earlier in very olden vehicles and nowadays it is not being used because it has a large number of disadvantages when compared with other gearbox mechanisms the recently or the recent vehicles make use of synchro mesh type of gearbox mechanism now let us see how the sliding mesh gearbox mechanism works before going on to the working of a sliding mesh gearbox let us see the principle of working when two gears are in mesh with each other suppose we have two different gears let us name it as 1 and 2 gear 2 is the driver gear and gear 1 is the driven gear so the motion is transmitted from gear 2 to the gear 1 and let us say if the driver gear has for example 20 number of teeth and if the driven gear has a number of teeth equal to 40 when these two gears mesh with each other and when it rotates after one complete revolution of gear 2 only one half revolution will be executed by the driven gear because the number of teeth is almost half or it it is half so when 20 number of teeth have meshed completely in the driver in the driver gear only 20 number of teeth same number of teeth would have meshed in the driven gear also so the balance remaining 20 teeth have not undergone meshing and therefore we can say that the driven gear will be executing only one half of the revolution so that means the speed of the gears is also getting equally into half if the gear 2 suppose has a velocity or a rotational speed of say 40 rpm the speed of gear 1 will be exactly the half that is only 20 rpm because it is executing only one half of the revolution and we know that the torque in the gear in the case of meshing gears the torque is inversely proportional to the speed that means when the speed of n1 increases is inversely proportional to the torque when n1 increases the torque decreases and vice versa when n1 decreases torque increases so in the case of this type of meshing where the driver gear has a smaller number of teeth is smaller in size when compared to the driven gear the speed reduction takes place and torque increase takes place so that is the basic mechanism used in gearboxes where we have to vary the speed and torque for example when it comes to gear 1 in the case of gear 1 the meshing gear or the driver gear will be a smaller gear and the driven gear will be larger in size similar to this particular example so here the torque is increased whereas the speed is decreased so torque increases and speed decreases so in the case of the first gear when the vehicle needs a higher traction power 
that is when high torque is needed we use the driver gear as a smaller gear and the driven gear as a larger gear similarly for gear 2 the driver gear will be comparatively more larger in size and the driven gear will be smaller in size as shown in this example but even then the size of the gear 2 will be more or less the same or it can be slightly higher than gear 1 so compared to this gear 1 during transmission the gear 2 when the vehicle is in gear 2 the torque will be comparatively smaller and the speed will be comparatively larger when the vehicle is put in gear 3 or gear 3 is engaged then we can see that the vehicle will be undergoing or the um, vehicle will have the drive direct drive from the clutch gear that mechanism we will be seeing uh, in the coming video let us continue with this so in the gearbox you can see that this is actually the sliding mesh gearbox it has three different shafts one is the clutch shaft then we have the main shaft and the lay shaft or the counter shaft so there are three different shafts clutch shaft the lay shaft or the counter shaft and the main shaft the clutch shaft is the shaft that is coming from the clutch mechanism the clutch uh, we have the clutch that is engaging with the uh, engine and clutch shaft is the shaft that is coming as the output from the clutch mechanism and there is a gear in the clutch shaft which is known as the clutch gear this clutch gear will always be in contact with the first gear this gear of the counter shaft this gear larger gear of the counter shaft and all the gears on the counter shaft are fixed in the shaft that means these gears in the counter shaft cannot be moved they will remain as such they are machined on the surface of the counter shaft and a idle gear is kept in mesh with the smaller gear of the counter shaft so this is for the reverse gear mechanism there will be an idle gear which is in mesh with the counter shaft and this idle gear also will be always rotating then we have the main shaft or the output shaft where we can vary the gears that are meshing with the counter shaft gears thereby obtaining different transmissions so this is the sliding mesh gearbox mechanism this is the gear lever and this particular mechanism which is used for sliding the gears into position the gears on the main shaft they can be slided over the main shaft because the main shaft is a splined shaft there are a number of splines kept that are machined on the surface of the main shaft and the gears which are mounted on the main shaft also has internal splines so we can slide these two gears which are mounted on the main shaft accordingly so for sliding the gears we have a mechanism which is known as the dog clutch so dog clutches are used to slide the gears into position on the main shaft so this dog clutch is activated by the gear lever when we uh, put the gear 1 or gear 2 or gear 3 what we are doing is we are shifting the position of this gear lever and accordingly the dog clutch will engage or disengage the particular gear into position so let us see what happens 
so this is the block diagram or the diagram of the sliding sliding mesh gear box mechanism the clutch shaft and the one gear number one shown here is the clutch gear and this is the second gear means the gear number two of the lay or the counter shaft then we have gear number three four the gear number five and six are mounted on the main shaft or the output shaft so here you can see it is a splined shaft so that gear number 6 and 5 can be slided over the main or output shaft they can be moved to the left hand side or the right hand side then the gear number 7 and 8 they are the gears the gear number 7 is again mounted on the counter shaft and gear number 8 is the idle gear which is used when the vehicle needs to be or needs to go a reverse motion that means for the reverse gear, gear number 8 will be coming into position or it will be activated. Now we can see how the working takes place. When the vehicle needs to be put in gear 1, that is when the vehicle needs higher torque and low speed, the gear number 5 will be moved to the left hand side and gear number 5 will be coming and meshing with the gear number 4. So since the clutch shaft is rotating, when the clutch shaft rotates, it is always rotating. When the clutch is disengaged position, that means when we are not disengaging the clutch, the clutch shaft will be uh, always rotating. That means the gear number 1 will always be rotating. Since it is always in contact with the gear number 2, the gear number 2 will also be rotating always. And since these gears are fixed to the counter shaft, the counter shaft will also be in always in rotating condition. So if the clutch shaft is rotating, the counter shaft will also be rotating in the opposite direction. So when we need to change the gear, we apply the clutch so that the clutch shaft is disengaged it won't be rotating <coughs> and the gear number 5 is slided to the left hand side and it will be engaging with the gear number 4 and all the gears which are used in sliding mesh gearbox are spur gears so that we can slide one gear over the other if it is a helical gear or any other type of gear, we cannot easily slide one gear over the other. So that is why we use spur gears in the case of sliding mesh gearbox mechanism. So when we slide the gear number 5 and when it comes and meshes with the gear number 4, after meshing, we disengage the clutch so that the rotation again starts and the motion is being transmitted. So we can see how the motion is getting transmitted after meshing takes place. Now it is in meshed condition. So the motion will be transmitted from gear number 1 to the gear number 2. And since the gear number 4 is also located on the counter shaft or the lay shaft, it is also in rotating condition. And when we slided the gear number 5 to mesh with the gear number 4, now 4 and 5 are meshed together so that the motion is transmitted from gear number 4 to the gear number 5. And as we discussed at the first instance where the driver gear, so the driver gear here is gear number 4 and driven gear is the gear number 5. 4 has lesser number of teeth when compared to the gear number 5. So as we mentioned the torque increase or torque multiplication takes place and the speed reduction takes place. So torque is increased and speed is decreased. So during gear number 1, when the vehicle is or the gear first gear is engaged, 5 and 4 are in mesh with each other and the motion is transmitted from this gear number 4 to the gear number 5. 
So speed reduction and torque increase takes place and motion is transmitted to the through the output shaft. So this shaft is the output shaft. That is the first gear. During the second gear, when the second gear is engaged, the gear is before the second gear is engaged, we have to remove the engagement between the gear number 4 and 5. So, when we move the gear lever, the 5, the gear number 5 is now disengaged with the gear number 4. So, after applying clutch, when the motion stops, the 5, gear number 5 is again disengaged, it is moved away from gear number 4 and it is moved to the left hand side again. And when we put gear 2 or the second gear is engaged, the fifth gear, this gear will be coming and engaging with the, <coughs> the, this number, the third number, gear number 3. So here you can see that, sorry, uh, the gear number 5, when we are uh, engaging the second gear, the gear number 5 is sliding to the right hand side so that this gear, the gear number uh, A7, uh, the gear number uh, 